Today we are going to go change out a compressor on. You don't have a hammer? What kind of hammer would you like, son? There's a carpenter's hammer. We've got two different dead blow hammers. A sledgehammer. Oh my, that, 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 that ain't good. Look how black that is. This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. All right, guys, so today we are going to go change out a compressor on a walk-in freezer that I found bad. That's the cooler, and that's the freezer. This thing is, I think, 21 years old. I recommended that they replace it, but they chose to go with a new compressor. That being said, we're gonna give them a new compressor. Now, what I did do when I was here is I pumped this thing down to see if it would pump down, it would not. Yeah, there's a lot of things that are just hodgepodgey about this whole thing. Yeah, hear that compressor. Instantly stops, instantly kicks back on. That's what we got. At least it's not a burnout. I told him, I said, it's just a matter of time until the fan motor goes out and all the other little small components or coil leaks. It's noted on the paperwork. We've got it recovered. Let's go ahead and get some of these things popped off so we can unbraze this. The compressor is actually just snapped off, so it's not burned out. Somebody's gotta get on there as tight as they can get it. Good and tight. We're just gonna make this simple. That wire's so stiff. The only reason why I'm removing this is because I don't want the heat to transfer up into the switch. Now, what would suck is if you ever had to replace this, some jack took the Schrader core out of there, and so you pop that bad boy and psh, you can at least isolate it down there on that discharge valve down there, but still. That's my homemade stainless steel presser tote. Now, a lot of times I don't run nitrogen on it when I'm changing a compressor at the compressor. You can do it. Not horribly worried about just two connections at the compressor a lot of times, especially on bigger systems with TXVs. Now, I want to make sure I remove my flame before I pull that thing out of there because there's probably going to be some oil in there and you'll have some flare up. See that? Works out great that way. And we should be able to pull it right about... There. I don't know how that got bent and that got bent, but that was how it was when I got here. And brand new freaking torch head and it doesn't shut off all the way. Gotta love that. I wanna make sure that the oil is still in there because I wanna make sure that we don't have an oil issue with that accumulator could be defective. Once again, why I wanted to replace the whole unit. We'll pour this thing into a barrel or into a bucket. Right on top here is the oil charge. It says 45 ounces of POE oil. Easiest way to get it out of here is to dump it out through the suction side here. Kind of difficult. Oh my, that ain't good. Look how black that is. See all that refrigerant in the oil? That's what happens when you're trying to pull the uh, system into a vacuum and it takes forever. That is refrigerant oil, and that is jet black, nasty, nasty sh crap. Now, how much time did it take for me to pull that oil out of there? That's why they say to do it. Man, that is jet flipping black. Now, we can give it the old sniffer. I do not smell anything bad. I have no bad smells at all in there. That is just plum filth. That crap's gonna be trapped in the receiver. We're gonna go ahead and cut out the dryer. I'm glad we're replacing the refrigerant because like I said, this thing wasn't, um, didn't smell bad. The nut and stuff on the bottom. <sighs> Finally, let's put her upside down for a minute. Oh yeah. I spoke with people and everyone's made aware of what could be going on. So we're just gonna continue on doing what we gotta do here and get this thing up and going. At least there ain't a lot of gunk down there in the suction line. So maybe it just all got trapped in the compressor. Honestly, that's really clean. That is really clean there. There's no, no gunky stuff down there at all. Nothing dripping out of the dryer, so maybe it's not that big of a deal. Maybe I'm just overreacting. What can I say? Well, you've got to keep that in mind before you complain or say things because there's just nothing the person doing the job can do other than make someone aware. I'm not a big suction side dryer type person. 
and that blows through pretty good. That feels fine to me. Put a, uh, a 164 in there. This is a 184, so we're gonna get, you know, 164 cubic inches compared to 84. Yeah, we'll go ahead and run some garden hose through that and get that washed out. Just kidding. Surprising the bearings on this old bird seem pretty good. Original reason why we came out here is they thought the motor was bad. So I thought, yeah, that's an easy call for the day. It wasn't that. It was the compressor wasn't pumping enough pressure to make the pressure switch make to make the fan come on. That needs to deburred, but I do not want to deburr down in there. So what we're just gonna do is round out the edges. That way nothing falls down in there. Not a real good way to do it other than bend the pipe over and then you're just weakening the copper a little more. So we'll just round out those edges a little bit. That one there, you could do it the, the traditional way. Oh, those pliers that everybody hates. I'm gonna do a video on this because what people don't understand is you can open and close, open and close. They think I'm rounding the edges over. Every time I get one of these imbeciles that bitch about my pliers, because I'm not gonna carry, you know, here's the thing, I got tools. I got tools, I got all kinds of tools. You wanna see what kind of tools I got? They say get a socket set. What kind of socket set and box wrench would you like me to have? Deep well? Would you like metric? Would you like stars? standard allen wrench you name it i got it all in there it ain't because i don't have it it's because i don't need it and i know there's only like three or four imbeciles out there that say this crap oh and then then you got the impacts and stuff too because you know we've got big boy stuff too that we work with it irks me because one guy said oh you you won't admit you're wrong i'm like i'll admit i'm wrong if i'm wrong but i'm not wrong let's take a look at the nut here totally unrelated to the video but it just is a good time to talk about it. Okay, let's look at that. Hold it out to here so we can zoom in on it. Do you see any rounding? Oh my, there was one little rounded piece at the very edge. And who knows if that was for me? No rounding. Hmm. Yep. May have to hit on that. Oh, that was the other thing. Got mad because I used my pliers. You don't have a hammer? What kind of hammer would you like, son? Now what sucks is that person that was watching probably ain't watching this video. So there's a carpenter's hammer. Got two different dead blow hammers. A sledgehammer. So I've had this little sledgehammer since I started. So yeah, I've got the tools, buddy. Honestly, it's two guys out of 52,000 views at the time on that video. It's on the generator video. 52,000, I think it's currently, it was at 55,000 views like a day or two before that, or later early that morning. He was bitching because I was using my pliers there that caused so much controversy and said you shouldn't be pounding on it. It was a starter I was gonna replace. So anyhow, I'm gonna flatten that out. And as you notice, I'm leaving the, the compressor closed until I'm ready for it. That way we're not letting moisture into the oil any sooner than we have to. We'll warm that metal up a little bit. And we'll bend that back down. There we go. Now we should be able to flatten that right down like it should be. That's much better. There we go. Look at that. Get her in there like that. I don't know, it's not as perfectly round on the inside I'd like to see, but I think that's the least of our worries at this point. So let's throw, show off the captain hook here. Since for the longest time I wasn't able to use the captain hook, my torch handle wasn't right the one. Get our oxy going. Nice and strong like that. There we go. And it don't have to be super, super strong because the uh, heat that's coming out of this thing is uniformed all the way across. And see how we can get right up to the compressor? And with that, the way it is, look, I can sit there and touch all the way around it. It's not gonna knock it out because of the way they've got it set up. So obviously, as usual, we're gonna put all the heat right here, then we're gonna bring it to there, and then bring it into the pocket like that. For the most part, it gets almost perfectly all the way around it. Starting to get there, almost there. I don't want it so high that it ends up, uh, look at that. All the way around. There we go. All the way uniform, just one little driplet on the bottom. Not bad. Come into the half inch here. Same thing. Always want to bring it into the center conductor coming into the pocket first, and then we're gonna pull the heat into the rest of the, I like calling it a pocket. 
socket, pocket, whatever you want to call it. We'll know here in a second, as you can see all the way around there, it's hitting it almost all the way across. There's a little bit there, a little bit on the back. I haven't used this thing much till just recently, so I don't even had a lot of experience with it. There we go. Like I said, I'm not running uh, nitrogen on that right here. It's minimal. I do it on all my small stuff, most things, but once again, if it's the first time you've ever watched me, you know I run it almost 99% of the things. On stuff like this, where it's bigger compressors, a lot of times I don't mess with it. It can cause you more issues than what it's saving you. On the dryer here, I will run some through it because it's not that big of a deal. It's gonna go right through uh, the discharge, through the condenser, through the receiver, and then through the filter dryer. The wet rag so we don't damage the filter dryer like I did on the last video. Not going for perfect deburring since we're not flaring it if you get scratches in there like I just did there, that can screw your flare all up. These are one of the few, half inch is one of the few that we don't have to rotate. Otherwise you gotta rotate it a few times. They're not the deepest socket, but if you're brazen, it, it's not a humongous deal. Notice I've got some leakage going out of that thing, which kind of sucks. It doesn't work very good. I think it works good on stuff that's not very, very aged. <laughs> that on up there like that so we'll go to there with that see that nothing falls in there and it rounds over the edge a little bit cleaner the better the better it flows and we'll end up swedging the upper half that way everything's pulling down into the pocket or socket small amount maybe an eighth of an inch it gives you a perfect round because when you when you pump that up you can see that is got little potential gaps in between there and that rotates it so they're equally pressed on each side we can open up our gauges here we'll blow right in through here like i said i do it when i feel as though it's needed see it comes through the high side solenoids closed there we go Now there's hardly any, there's a little bit there, but not near what was there before. Look at that, pulled all the way around without even hardly doing anything. We have a little shot here on the back side. That makes it so easy. That was worth buying my own handle. Cause like I said, my handle was a Victor before and uh, wow, that just pulled down in there beautiful all the way around. Go ahead and get this one here. There we go. So that got that and you can see the oil and stuff that's burning off that was in the piping. That's like I said, all, all nitrogen. Um, I'm not gonna be able to get the true blues on there anyway. So let's go ahead. We'll feed through the high side there. We'll pull it out on top here. I love how they quit painting that on. So if they make a mistake, all they gotta do is I mean, they're stamping it still at least, but they're not painting it on anymore. We'll lean this back a touch. There we go. Problem I've found with any of this stuff, whether it's wet rags, true wet rags, wet rag the stuff, whatever you've got to be able to get your heat into that pocket and when you put this stuff right up against it not only does it destroy it which is what it's made to do but i hate wasting it for you know things like this where it don't necessarily matter a lot other than losing the paint it screws you up to the point where you can't get the heat into the pocket and it takes twice as long to get your braze in there and that's what i don't like i mean why did they why did they skimp so much and use such a short stub why didn't they make it a little longer like some of the other manufacturers that's what i hate about this design it's just asking for problems who am i i'm just some guy on youtube now, when you're doing this, you gotta be careful that you don't get that heat up there on that. That's the only thing that kinda sucks. So you gotta be really careful of that. Let's 
So I got that one. See, you can't quite get it. Not gonna work. Put that heat up right here, and we're gonna try to pull it down to there. So once I seen that thing start to get a little bit red, we're going into that next spot there. See, I'm already starting to burn that there. Just try to put a little bit in there and you really can't get it to there we go. But look, it's not wanting to pull down into that pocket very good at all. It's just laying on top. That's what I hate. That's my complaint. So you just sacrificed the wet rag for it. You gotta watch you ain't burning all that stuff up above. It's cooling the joint down too, which makes it very difficult. You gotta start overheating it all back up again. We got it in there, but you've totally toasted this right here on your on your stuff. See, so Miles just playing on throwing all that away. This is where I think sometimes a paper towel would be better. Um, truly, a paper towel. If you put it on there, it's thin and it won't catch on fire if it's wet. And actually, does a fairly good job. Believe it or not, there's this guy I work with. That was the one thing I kind of learned off him. I don't know if he just happened to pick it up out of the comic books or what, but it actually works pretty good. All right, so you can see that it still took it down to the metal. I'm not gonna waste my time on the other one. Get her hot, get her hot fast, get on and get off. That's my philosophy on anything I do when I braise. Shoot the heat down away from it as best you can and pull it on up. A lot of times it does just as good. Just depends on the situation. If it's TXV and stuff like that, I'm willing to sacrifice whatever I got to for that. Looks like I pulled up there really nice. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on here. That way I can pull the vacuum on the compressor part a little bit easier. It's time to get the old Nylog out, get some of these fittings back together and get this thing pulled in the vac. Got the four CFM Navac cordless pump over there. Got the blue vac hoses there. This should make quick work of it. As always, you wanna lubricate your flare fittings like this. I got a little bit on the back side of the nut. This is the most important, is the back side of the nut. That way, she gooberfies. I'd really like to see a Schrader core in that. So let's see if they didn't already crush it. They may have already crushed it so much. They may not be able to throw that in there. Yeah, see somebody crushed it. That's what happens when you over tighten the flare fitting. Now I could get in there with a the drill bit and drill it out. A lot of times I'll twist this wire and just unwind it without cutting it. But because this wire is so hard, I mean, it's, look at that. I mean, that thing's like a, it's ridiculously stiff. Boy, I just, it's a shitty setup no matter what you look at it as. We're going to do a pressurization on the suction here at the compressor, which is where we're gonna pull for my vacuum. But for pressure test wise, I'm gonna go ahead and basically pressing backwards through the suction line, through the TXV and up to that solenoid valve because the solenoid valve is closed right now or because it's not energized. We could, and we probably will, let's go ahead and pull our magnet out. Not a freaking joke. Oh, that ain't freaking rusted to shit. There. Now to be safe with that, we'll stick a piece of metal in there, screwdriver, whatever. That way it doesn't get fried if by chance I forget that it's not plugged in. Not seeing any leaks. Doesn't mean that all these switches aren't going bad, but you don't have any leaks on anything I worked on. I do not think that this is gonna work. Yeah, it won't work. There's no way I can do that off of that. I could do it off of that one right there, but honestly, I've seen a whole system done off one suction side, even on a big cooler like this, all off of the suction port at the evaporator. This has been, the oil's been used on a couple poles so far. 
We're at 4,700 microns. Stopwatch is at four minutes and 38 seconds. We're doing 14 microns a second and a negative going down, which is good. That's on the furthest from, from the uh, suction side all the way through the system and back to that. Yeah, we're gonna have a little bit of time pulling down on this, I, I guarantee it. I would have liked to pull from both sides, but with that little rigmarole they got going on there, that's, that's kind of difficult to get into. And the hoses are sometimes difficult. I'm trying to get me some uh, 90 degree angle ones for them for when I, I get in tight spots like this, because that's definitely something you need. All right, gonna put some wire ties on here to help hold these wires up. Right in here with this other nasty oil. See how it acts now with uh, the right amount of oil and the new oil. See if it pulls down any quicker. Good thing is, is we're holding right in there at 1600 so far. We've only went up about 25 microns, I think. It's doing a little better. It's down to two microns a second. We're pulling a lot of refrigerant and stuff out of the oil. <sighs> That's the problem with these stupid dryers. Sporling, come on guys. I mean, really, look at that. Got a little bit of big blue on it and it wipes your, your thing right off. You need to go back to printing it on. I'm starting to go bad. That battery did not last very long. We're at 974 microns and I only got about a total run time, 34 minutes out of it. So Navac, I'd really like to have another battery. That's, that's not good. So we're gonna go ahead and kill that. And we're gonna yank this battery. Now what I did do is I bought a adapter so that I don't have to use their battery. This will probably void your warranty, but you know, it is what it is. Here's a six. Look at that. Plenty of juice to get the job done. And we're still dropping even though I've got it valved off, which is awesome. We're going to gut this and move it over to the other device. We're down to 689 microns. I'm about ready to just say screw these things and just run it without the cable. Just needs cleaned up. There's your start relay. That wasn't looking very good. Cut that out of there. She's holding her at 670. I'm happy with that. We're gonna break the vacuum with some refrigerant. That's a power hungry hog. I don't use it a lot, so it's they have just gone bad setting there, I don't know. I'm gonna put a heavier duty contactor on there. This is a uh, 40 amp, gives us a little more capacity. It's three phase, usually can't get a 40 amp capacitor too easy, or 40 amp contactor very easily in a single phase. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and mount that up. So we'll just go ahead and pop off to the second side here. We'll go one coil. Like I said, we're just gonna charge a little bit of liquid in here just to get it out of the vacuum. We're not gonna flood the compressor with it or anything else. We're on 404. And let's zero it. And let's put a little bit in there, just a little bit. Just enough to get her out of a negative. That's more than enough. There we go. So now we've got our gauge off. We're good there. That's just 12 ounces. That's not going to hurt the compressor. I didn't hammer it with uh, liquid and wash all the oil out. It's not running, so not a huge deal. And remove that from there, and that way it'll all pump into the, the uh, liquid receiver. So our bled all the way up to there, and now we can dump it in. There's still only 13 ounces, so there's the rest of that. We'll close off the suction, and we'll let it dump as much as we can dump into the receiver. We'll just isolate this. We'll go ahead and pull that out and get the Schrader core back in there. Once we get down to temperature, we gotta check our superheat. Make sure the valve is set correctly. That'll come in handy as an extra suction port for later. If we need to do a quick test, I'll have to dig down in that mess. The new systems are even worse to deal with because you can't get into any of it. Not going nowhere. There we go. There we go. 
I don't want it rubbing into the, the discharge. I mean, some of this stuff is just the way it was before, and that's not really the way I like it. This wire here, I think we're gonna probably have to take it out of the jacket. We may just run it through one of these rounded edges. I seldomly ever use that armored wire like that, so I'm not really needing it. I'm pretty sure that's an okay area, because that's rounded wire for some sort of reason. And that's gonna give me enough room to get to my uh, relays and all that stuff. We'll be good to go on that. That is not just sharp on the edge. It has literally been punched in and rounded by the factory. A spot for a little divot on our relay to fit right there. Use the tapping Phillips, right like that. We need to get these mounted up. I like these flat self-tapping Phillips screws. They tend to tap into anything and they're flat and nice so they don't get caught on the stuff. Not touching anything. They're not going nowhere. There we go. That works. Better than flopping around inside there like it was prior to me getting here. Good deal. So the way this works, we got power coming into the top. One leg goes right to the coil. It's 230 volt coil. Comes up to the low pressure switch, out of the low pressure switch, comes down to either that pressure switch there or that temperature switch, which I think it's the pressure switch because it's a fat lead. Fat lead comes back, it's inside here, needs a junction. Then you have a thin little wire that goes to the temperature sensing switch. Confusing as hell because you can't tell which one's which because I bundled them together, which is my fault. Maybe these two right here, they're the lightest gauge ones. So you come to these light gauge ones. One of them is this one. The other one goes straight up to the coil, which is the other side of the coil. So we know that these two here need to tie together. Why? Because they're in series with one another. That's it for that because the way this works is basically this thing's wired to run all the time until the low pressure switch, the high pressure switch, or the temperature switch shuts it down. Now we did get nine pounds and a half into it. Then we'll stop there at that. We now have to get voltage, high voltage down here to from the contactor to this, which I'm going to reuse some of these nice heavy duty wires they had before. Then you've got the fans and stuff on the very bottom of it. And then they also tied in with the fan cycle switch breaking one leg of those. And I th yeah, we only got one fan, so it's only one, one to shut down. So there's that one. That is gonna be the red wire going down to there. So we wanna tie onto that one right there. We'll just junction it to the top of that capacitor, which I don't particularly love, but it will work just fine. So there's your power leads. Got a heavier contactor than normal. Need to run one screw in there to mount that a little bit better. And we'll go ahead and peel this sticker off and stick it on the inside here. Got the contactor secured. Um, we're about ready to roll this dog. Yep, let's get some of this mess cleaned up and we'll do that. There we go. I think what happened was that one wire nut wasn't in there good enough. We're 208, 209 volts coming down to the bottom. 208, 209 volts, we're good on that. Let's put her in defrost, make sure it kicks out. Pressure switch is good in case it starts raining. You guys always seem to love this. I found this on another YouTube channel. So let's come in here and we do not have, all I did is put it up there against it and we do not have any magnetic field. So we know that our solenoid is disengaged. Kick her back out of defrost. She just released. She just kicked on about 20 something. I'll have to use the analog gauge on that. Turn the light on. How in the world did that get? Well, it's blown cold, so it must have. Hopefully it's got a fan delay, it's working right. Um, that's good to know. We have a uh, heat exchanger unit there. We've got a bone TXV and that bulb is inside there and it has weird head pressure control. It's set for negative 10. Fan kicked on once. Got some flood back obviously coming back it seems. Side glass is actually full. Look at that, we don't have a headmaster on it. So no headmaster. 
Yeah, we have that bone miser. It's definitely a screw deal. I had one video where I did it and I had to call in on it because I had not seen that yet. So it was before I got into the refrigeration stuff. But basically the um, TXV takes care of low ambient control, which is really unusual to, to me for not being used to it. So we're gonna tie on to this fan pressure control. We're gonna bypass it and we're gonna let that fan run the whole time. Now that's a special gator there I've made with uh, lead wire, which is good for at least 10 to 15 amps. So we're just gonna let this thing run full bore and we're gonna get the, that sight glass full. She just finally went solid at about 14 and a half. We're gonna go ahead and dump a little more in. We're gonna pump it down, see where we're at on the receiver and kind of get it set up the old uh, traditional cheater method there. We're running a 73 degree condensing temperature in this weather out here, which it ain't too bad today, but yeah, see there it's flashing off. That bone miser is trying to make up for it. All right, so I had to get a refresher on the bone miser. You know, it doesn't need that 100 pound drop that some of them do. It's coming and going every now and again. It's been, it's solid right now. There you go, now you can see it. We're running a 63 degree condensing temperature with a negative 12 uh, evaporator. We're gonna go ahead and put a little more in there, then I'm gonna set the fan cycle back to normal and then let her roll. Well, we're gonna wait till she gets down closer to the box temp before we screw with it too much. Now we're back here before it gets to the heat exchanger. That bone miser, you can see the bulb is actually in suction. And it's able to, like I said, run that lower head pressure and still be able to maintain superheat. We are running right here, uh, 132 on the head pressure, 20 on the suction, which is a negative 14. Suction temperature inside the uh, box is 10, We're running a 24 degree superheat. Surprisingly, I'm actually getting some subcooling right down there on that. And all we're doing is mirroring the gauges here. Just makes it a little easier to see. That's super heat, we can't trust that until we get to box temperature. I won't, I won't even touch it until I'm at least zero. If it's cooler, I'm not doing anything until I'm at 35 area, 38, 40, somewhere in that ballpark. No more than 40, but I prefer 38, 35, somewhere in that area where it's gonna be about ready to shut off, where it's gonna run the most. Do a little cheat here. We are at seven amps, 7.1. Our run 5.9 and I'd have to pull the specs up to see what it is on that thing. Yeah, we're solid on the sight glass. We're gonna put the fan cycle back to it. He couldn't remember why he did it, but he knew there was something, some sort of reason. It's been over a year ago. But anyhow, the system's working. It's dropping a temp, which is beautiful. And that's great. This is a fun waiting game. So I've got it somewhere around 10, 11, 12. It fluctuates. We've dropped down to 10 degrees in here. It was uh, 11, there's nine. It's already started to drop faster now that we're feeding more through. You can also see how much more it's feeding that oil. That's right at 10. It'll work at that even. So I'm about tempted to stop there since we're so close. I mean, we're already 9.5. That's it's dropping fast. It is dropping really fast. You know what, something I just thought of, it's got a strainer right there. We need to pump this thing down, test the defrost anyway. Let's check that strainer, make sure it's all right. Okay, she should pump down, start going in defrost. It should be pumped down far enough that we should be able to pop that open. Okay, so right there it is. Holding it up to light. There really ain't nothing in it. We're good. So we did at least check the strainer and we are fine. And we're gonna look at that brass when I'm done here and I'm gonna show you the son of a gun is not messed up. Looky there, not one damn mark on that thing, nothing. That's brass, brass is soft. I can hear it ticking so it must be getting warm. It's hard to feel anything in here when it's 15 degrees already. So I'm gonna leave it at that. We're at 10 to 11 degrees superheat. By the time it hits zero to negative five, it should be somewhere around six to eight area. We should be good. Uh, we've got new filter dryer in there. We've got the screen checked. The screen is good. That's, that's about as much as anybody else would ever do. So I think we're good to go. All right, one last thing I better do here is check my on and off pressures. So I just kicked it out of that defrost and it didn't come on right away. All right, let's we'll focus on the cut in because that's what I'm worried about anyway. Wanted at 22 there. Uh, just a squishy hair less, just to be safe. There we go. 
Okay, now I'm going to pump down again. Boom, about 22 exactly, beautiful. There's five, four, probably. Right there would be great. Right there would be better. Okay, so we're right there at it. We're just about a pound or two. On a little bit more, so that way I know that it's going to shut off while it's still in a positive, but at the same time, it's not going to short cycle back and forth when summertime comes. Uh, let's kick it out of that. It is 420. Let's get her at four o'clock area and get out of here. Those guys are ready to go home. So am I. Let's call it our day. All right, if you guys enjoyed the video and you want to see more like it, please give it a thumbs up. Check us out on Instagram. And until next time, guys, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Later.